Ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen, may I present to you the microwave. And it's a big one, because that's a normal size cup of water. Uh, so I got this thing from the original owner. It's a, I believe, 1987 model uh, Electro Helios, a uh, rather local Nordic company. And this is one of these super rare... Uh, what I call fan microwaves, uh, where you have, rather than the food spinning around, you have this fan in the top which uh, reflects a radio wave energy coming from the magnetron. And uh, uh, I got this thing because it was a, a running kind of not very good kind of uh, what I've seen from it's kind of intermediate in its uh, running, and the uh, owner felt uh, after. 30 years of faithful service, uh, it was time for an upgrade. And I have wanted one of these fan microwaves for such a long time. This is a dream come true. Uh, so I'm going to do my utmost to get this thing working. Uh, I have a feeling the mag magnetron might be broken in it. Uh, but uh, before we get to that, uh, uh, we're going to do some uh, troubleshooting on the rest of it. Because it is rather a smart a device. Uh, we have got, uh, aside from the normal microwave stuff, a full 1980s computer board there uh, with its 24-7 running capacitors and power supply. Uh, seems to be a, it's about a single-sided board, possibly, so we could have some solder joint failures. Uh, and, uh, of course, we have all the plentiful, very old connectors and uh, I uh, just a moment ago disconnected with magnetron and they're looking rather shoddy all of them so I'm going to be cleaning all of these up uh, and uh, hopefully we might get this thing working uh, actually reliably. Uh, the symptom it's been having uh, w w when I run it in the shop is it, it kind of turned the magnetron on for a while and it's been kind of uh, making that microwave starting noise, the little buzzing noise they make it kind of continuously and then sometimes it cuts out completely. Uh, but sometimes it seems to be working just fine, and when it works, it does work. It uh, uh, draws a 1500 watts, and it's uh, doing a very good job heating my cups of water. Uh, it's also got some issues uh, with uh, the actual being is, is arcing uh, from the fan to some metal piece in there, so I think might have to clean that a bit. I'm not sure this thing is impeccably kept. It's absolutely beautiful. Like, just look at that. This thing looks brand new. I am so happy to be able to give this thing a chance to second life because it's oh, such a gorgeous unit. I mean, come on. You do not get a microwave like this today. You just do not. Uh, we do have a belt drive here. The belt was apparently replaced recently, and it feels fine. Uh, everything's spinning very well, and uh, that's about it. Just look at that gorgeous transformer. Labeling, ratings, copper windings. You don't get that anymore, and that giant ass capacitor back there. Ah, uh, uh, I don't think that's an issue. Uh, it's supposed to have been tested, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to touch it unless I have to. And we do have a very weird looking bulb there, I'm not sure what's going on there. Rather odd thing. Seems to be an uh, odd thing about this thing, is it uh, draws uh, lights. Well, let's just show you how this thing works, right? So, this isn't the uh, open button, this is the power on button for the entire thing except for the computer. So if we uh, plug this in and turn it on, it goes beep. Sometimes it goes beep twice, making me suspect something's up with a CPU board. Uh, and if we press that button, which, you know, you'd think it just turns the entire thing on. Nope. It just <laughs> uh, actually turns the entire thing on. And then uh, oh, we can just Put our drink in there. I'm missing some shelving, but if I'm lucky, I am going to get the original shelving for this thing too. 
which is going to be great. So we do that, make sure it's sealed tight, and we enter our time. These are touch buttons, by the way. 15 seconds. Well, let's see how it runs this time. So this type of magnetron is not engaging at all. Oh yeah, that's going to be because it's disconnecting and disconnected, isn't it? So let's connect that up and try again. Alright, I think we might actually find the issue on this thing because look at that left contact there. Uh, I've been grinding away at that with a Dremel. And there are very, very clear signs of arcing and that's run very hot. So I'm hoping with some more manual labour it's relatively hard to access due to the plastic shroud there. But uh, once I get those arcing marks off, that's going to make a world of difference for this thing. Yeah, just look at that. That's been arcing for a very long time. All right, through the very liberal application of sandpaper, toothpicks, alcohol and uh, files, I think we've got this down to something uh, close enough to uh, metal uh, for me to dare reconnect it. All right, time for another go. Power on. Four watts standby. A moment of truth. Are we going to have horrible magnetron sounds? Oh, that actually sounds. Actually, sounds rather good. Uh, but we're still going to be taking the CPU board out of this thing. And I need to make a note not to stick my fingers around ledges because this thing is so full of 230 volt stuff just going all over the place. <laughs> uh, you do not want to be fingering around this 80s thing while it's connected to the mains. But I think we might have found the main issue on this thing. Certainly. It does actually have a... A heating element up there. That big black thing, that's actually a heating element. Let's let's see. Let's see if we can if that works. Kinda like. Okay, just figure this thing out. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's why the entire thing is uh, smoking. Uh, because I managed to actually enable the browner. And uh, this thing is a one kilowatt ish heating element. So, watch this. Uh, so it's uh, just in the standard reset position. So we go to uh, cook one, and now we get to choose the settings for the first step cooking. So we can do like 10 seconds at uh, full power level because we're just doing 10 seconds. Then we go to cook two, and we select Browner for one minute and that's going to make this thing first you can hear the microwave starting you can run the microwave for 10 seconds and then it goes click and soon smoke is going to start pouring out of this thing because it's running the heater and it's going to stop doing that after one minute so you can like cook your food with a microwave and then have it uh, actually get grilled without having to take it out of a microwave. And I can see my cups nice and warm already. Right, let's bench this thing. Uh, so I took it outside, gave it a thorough blowjob, uh, perhaps even a, a bit overly thorough as the fan came off, but uh, let's worry about that later. And let's have a look at the technology in this thing. So there are basically three service items I want to deal with on this thing. 
The first one being this uh, fan motor, which is making a bit of a rattling noise. I can imagine the bearings being a bit drier than they should be, so I'm hoping we can get this thing apart and lube it up a bit. And the second is the fan motor, which uh, it seems to have rather good lube in it, but since the fan came off anyway, I want to take that out and get some fresh grease on those bearings as well. And the final component is the CPU board, uh, which I want to take out and uh, replace the capacitors on, and I want to make sure that all the solder joints are still holding up after nearly 30 years of use. Uh, this is a single layer PCB, so I'm expecting some cracks to have started to form, in particular around the VFD area where it's going to be running somewhat warm all the time. But uh, let's start with motors. So the fan motor is uh, a rather peculiar little thing because uh, it's a normal uh, synchronous AC motor, uh, as you'd normally find for turning the plates in these microwaves, uh, except it has no gearbox assembly. These usually come in completely enclosed with a little reduction gearbox in here. Uh, but uh, since we get a reduction in the belt drive to the actual fan, they've just done away with that. Uh, what's more, we have a little uh, slack, intentional slack in the mechanism, which uh, kind of surprised me. You can see I'm turning this plastic piece without the actual motor turning. And that is in order to allow this to start properly. We need to do a, bit, a little bit of a turn in order to actually get going these motors. So to achieve that, we've just uh, left, uh, made these little teeth here, which just uh, clutches on and allows the motor to gain a bit of momentum before it actually starts turning the fan. And that's probably a big cause for the noise I've been suspecting to be uh, just a bad motor, but uh, hmm. Seems not. So I'm just going to put a small dab of oil on all this stuff and put it back together. It's in very good shape, I must say. No issues. And I was wondering why the yeah, I couldn't just. I was wondering why I couldn't just lift the entire mechanism out, and why the axle wasn't turning around the bottom of this thing. Well, <laughs> it turns out the bearing assembly is actually around that axle. Oh, that's a little permanent magnet. And I must say that uh, for being 30 years old, this grease, aside from being in the entirely wrong place, is surprisingly fresh. It hasn't turned into horrible gunk, it's just pretty much good. But there's always room for some molybdium disulfide. And of course we've got to give some attention to the actual uh, fan rotor assembly as well. And so I just took this out, it's just attached with these two clips around the fan axle and underneath I found these two PTFE rings and I figured oh, that's weird, why would they use two rings as a bushing for this rotor? Well, uh, the answer is rather simple, they didn't because uh, this used to be one ring which was simply worn through so we're gonna have to manufacture a new ring and thankfully I've got some PTFE. In fact I've got like a five kilo box of PTFE uh, but among that uh, are a few of these uh, little white wafers and I figured uh, these are a bit too thick I don't have a lathe uh, but I think I can just manually kind of grind one of these down to make it fit for microwave. Well isn't that the safest bench grinder you ever saw? Alright, after a lot of grinding, mostly with a Dremel, and I just finished it off with the bench grinder, and we have created this out of one of the PTFE wafers. So this is, as you can see, rather thin, you can see the light shining through it, it's 3mm ish in the edges and about 1mm at the centre, uh, but above all, it is even at its thinnest, considerably thicker than the original disc. And since this disc is uh, considerably larger than the original one, uh, we get the additional benefit of uh, uh, even if the fan wheel grinds through, which is supposed to make contact, uh, the new wheel will actually allow you to ride along this outer edge, uh, whereas the original disc just wouldn't reach that far out. So I think this is going to be a very good replacement, even though it took a rather ridiculous amount of work. So we'll just put a little bit of 
grease right here uh, where the XL is going to pop out because that uh, quite obviously is not Teflon so it's not going to be it's not going to be quite as low friction as the PTFE parts but we'll get a new bushing in place Absolutely perfect. So that just leaves off with the fan motor left and it's attached with uh, two bolts there. Nothing to it. Well, there proved to be plenty to get in that fan off since you really cannot access any of these screws with any sane screwdriver in the world. So I opted to just put some of this stuff on the axle around the bearings and it seems to be doing well enough. This fan was in decent shape to begin with, so I don't think that's going to be an issue, even in the long run. Uh, I reinstalled the blade with some paper between the axle as well to prevent it from slipping off in the future because it really was not sitting on there very tight at all. Uh, granted it's not a big issue since it is actually blowing to towards the motor, the fan is pressing that way so I think it's going to be quite alright. So with that out of the way it's time to dig into the main board. Alright finally being back from all this traveling gives me a chance to finish up on this thing it's been sitting for a rather fair amount of time, probably a month or two. Uh, so this thing is really got nothing wrong with it uh, anymore. Why well, they've fixed all the uh, pulleys and stuff, which you probably saw a second ago. I'm just recapping for myself. Got a nice new Teflon wash under there, and all it remains to do is uh, fix the PCB. Well, replace the caps on it anyway, which I want to do just because of there. Uh, from 1987 and they've probably been connected ever since. So it took me a while to figure out how to actually get the electronics module out. It's uh, mounted to this plastic plate uh, but uh, there are two very very keenly hidden screws uh, recessed underneath here and I just undid them and it seems as if yeah that just pops out and we've got a little latching mechanism at the top. There we go, electronics module 8, one big multi-plug for everything it seems, so undo that, and we are in the game, sweet, let's uh, get this thing figured out. So that is the board out, and uh, it really does look like a very well kept board, uh, there's no real discoloration of anything, uh, which uh, shows that this thing is uh, not designed to run hot and horrid like so many of these appliances are. So we do have a couple of uh, points of interest here. Uh, most notably we can see uh, that uh, it's a single sided board, no tracks on the top side, a few jumpers to compensate for that, but uh, that means that the solder joints are likely to be kind of wonky, they don't last uh, an infinite number of thermal cycles since it's just such a small amount of uh, surface area the solder has to adhere to as compared to a plated through modern board. So we have got uh, two electrolytic caps, uh, one big main rectifier cap here by the transformer right above the transformer as well, uh, rated at uh, 4700 microfarad 16 volts and over here on the side we have got a smaller 100 microfarad 50 volt cap which uh, probably uh, works uh, together with a VFD since uh, these require a rather high voltage in order to run. I can't see more than one rectifier actually, not, not a full bridge one anyway so they're probably implying some magic to get the higher voltage for this out of the transformer. Uh, the transformer as well uh, is uh, a rather heavy component. I'm gonna check for solder joints on that since uh, it's not a name for these to just kind of wear out and basically fall off with time uh, if I don't just cause a bad connection and cause something else to fail first. Uh, I believe this is the Firista switching the uh, magnetron, but uh, we do also have a couple of relays on the other side here, which uh, I'm not entirely sure as to what they do. Uh, one is probably for the lamp and perhaps the other one for the uh, f uh, fan motor slash uh, 
whatever you should call it, small cooling fan motor and big uh, deflection fan motor for the uh, magnetron inside the actual uh, microwave chamber. I don't think the uh, main power switch here is uh, going to be any issue at all. It seems to be in very decent shape. Shape is a real shame, but this is so worn out here, though. Someone's been real big fingered, fat handed when they've handled this. So uh, let's just get the board out. Uh, it, uh, it's attached with a few of these attorney uh, bits, like I've seen car stereos. So it's going to be a bit annoying. Uh, getting it, but uh, since it's never been egged before, I can tell uh, it's not going to be a worn out or anything. Alright, so with this undone, this should, in theory, just pop out rather easily. And we are in! That took a fair amount more effort than I had anticipated, but uh, really it uh, was no big deal. I just it was way easier getting the plastic front off than I had imagined and it was installed very well with some metal threaded inserts in the plastic in absolutely gorgeous design actually and what's even better is the solder joints in this thing are these not pornographic they are in perfect condition this PCB has been soldered in a very good environment and they have used some properly good solder and flux to get us on there. They are absolutely shining and not a single one is broken. I still want to do, redo a couple of them just for the sake of getting rid of any possible fatigue which could have occurred over time. But really this thing is in perfect shape. So I am going to replace uh, the two electrolytic capacitors. I don't have a, a 4700 16 to put in there but the rule of thumb when it comes to these uh, linear paint supplies is a thousand microfarads per amp of power draw and on this board we are not this transformer could not deliver an amp if you tried so 3300 microfarads is going to be absolutely sufficient uh, for rectifying this I am positive. And there we have it, all fixed, soldered through, there was a couple of shoddy joints but really nothing major. So I uh, found out just as I assembled it that uh, the entire touch panel and display part was actually covered in some really hard like kitchen grease stuff which didn't want to come off of anything other than isopropyl alcohol, but uh, after a considerable amount of scrubbing, uh, it is clean and it is gorgeous. It looks pretty much brand new. So on the back side, we do have our new caps installed and it's looking pretty good. So there really isn't anything left but to put this back inside, put the microwave oven back together and enjoy a very good condition a vintage microwave and I'm finally gonna have to have an excuse to put up that shelf I've intended to put up in the kitchen for carrying this particular device. Uh, another thing I actually did on this thing uh, was that I put some 
PTFE uh, Teflon spray uh, in the bottom because it was kind of binding a little uh, when you were pushing it in but now it's just butter smooth and that stuff will last forever. So let's get this installed, see if our 3300 microfarad cap is gonna be good enough for running this thing for another 27 years. Alright, the moment of truth is upon us. Will it run or will it indeed turn into an electro helios? It is time to find out. And we do have a clock drawing 3 watts as it always have. Let's turn it on. Absolutely perfect. No explosions. Perfect power draw. So let's see if we can still heat our cup of water. One, double O, start. And I do believe it's working. And the Wi-Fi to my phone remote hasn't even cut out, so we're not even leaking enough, enough RF to kill Wi-Fi. Which is quite impressive for a thing this size, this age. They have a tendency not to be particularly RF proof. That is absolutely excellent. Absolutely excellent. Cheers. Mmm. Lukewarm coffee water. There we go, that's about it really. This thing is, is, is in pretty damn good shape and I'm just gonna put the cover back on and put it into use. Alright, several days later still and I have finally had a chance to install this in the kitchen. Isn't that gorgeous? So, I have brought out some proper homemade cheapo Thai food. This is like uh, 350 grams. Noodles, bit of meat, mostly veg vegetables. And I figured we'd give it a premier go. I even went so far as to set the non battery backed clock, which is gonna stay at forever zero at the first power outage, but never mind that. Here we go. That is, this feels so good. I've got all the parts installed. I've got the uh, glassy sheet thing you use to uh, protect from the spinning metal fan up there. And I've even, uh, this was actually, this is broken so I actually taped that to the side there, I'm hoping it's going to keep up that the foam tape isn't going to be full of water and start boiling or something. But here we go. Power on. So what do we do? We do like, well this is just a basic thing, we can't use the brownness so... Uh, let's start with like six minutes ah. no spinny plate perfect heat distribution perfect looks just look at that this thing is amazing it's not just smell rather warm already let's Try out the safety clocks. They work. Ooh, yeah, this is steaming hot. That did not take long. Gee, that's a 350 gram frozen meal. That usually takes uh, eight to nine minutes in the uh, old microwave. That horrid old thing. Do we actually get? that far superior heat transmission of the air 
that's that's warm. Right to the bottom too. I gotta take that out and stir it. There's probably gonna be a bit of ice in the center, I guess. Because there's no way this thing's heated that thing up in what? Three minutes fifteen? No way. That is, well, I'm sure you could say a steaming pile of shit if you want to be clever, but that is properly warm. I was, I, I did not expect that in the slightest, what? All right, I just had a bit of a taste and it is uh, still kind of cold in the middle. So we'll just uh, put it back when this do its full time. But it's definitely, uh, many people would probably consider that to be warm. Uh, but I'm just really picky about the temperature of my hot food. It has to be burning hot. I just cannot get over how quiet this thing is at the startup and pause. Because you can just start. And it's just a fan noise on the fan noise and the transformer and then when it's done it just beeps and there's no relay click no nothing it's absolutely wonderful I mean just compare it to what I'm used to my rifle hasn't been in for the full five minutes so let's give it a Temperature check. Oh, yeah, that is properly warm. That is absolutely fine. Let's try a different spot just in case that was a rogue. Hello, oh, it's warm. This food is warm. I have to move the microwave for five minutes. Well, I'm, I'm stunned. <laughs> I was not expecting that kind of performance. It must be because uh, in this one, in this one, you're just so much closer to the outlet of a magnetron that uh, you just get a more efficient power transfer into the food compared to the spinny plate ones, which just have a mag magnetron outlet so far away. Oh, well, that was. Absolutely excellent. So, with that, I'll just have to say thank you for watching and cheerio.